Is peppermint any good for treating SIBO? Let's dive into it. So peppermint oil gets a decent amount of press when it comes to treating SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's a condition that I see frequently. I treat it all the time in the clinic. If you just wanna jump straight to the end, I do use and recommend peppermint leaf and sometimes the oil when it comes to treating SIBO for the right patient. So everyone's gonna know what peppermint leaf is. I'm sure most of you have tried it in herbal teas. It's been used worldwide. Different cultures have adopted this herb. That's a really big piece when we're talking about traditional medicine. If there are many different traditional cultures that have been relying on this as a herbal medicine, it's definitely worth paying attention. So when we're talking about herbal actions, that's basically the effect of the herb on the gastrointestinal tract. We can see that peppermint is carminative, so it helps the body deal with that excess gas production in the digestive tract. It's also anti-inflammatory, it's a spasmolytic, so it helps with that um, muscle spasms, particularly the smooth muscles in the uh, digestive tract. It's diaphoretic, so it's helping with fever management. It's aromatic, it's a really, really big piece. A lot of the kind of aromatic, essential oil rich herbs make a play with SIBO uh, formulas. It's a nerving, so it can really help calm people down. And we're gonna be getting into the studies here, but a lot of uh, irritable bowel syndrome patients, they're dealing with a lot of kind of stress and anxiety, and most of them find that that flares their digestive symptoms. So a nerving, helping to regulate that nervous system get them out of fight or flight into rest and digest can be really helpful can definitely make people feel better and then the last big piece here is that peppermint is antimicrobial and you know SIBO is more complex than just killing bugs but most patients with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth they're going to need to be on some form of antimicrobial just to help rebalance and reduce those overgrowths that are in the wrong place that's the small bowel and uh, get things balanced in the digestive tract so as with most herbs peppermint is just full of different constituents there's a lot of flavonoids in there a lot of polyphenols in there some lignins and also some phenolic acids but most of the studies have been done on the kind of essential oil part of the plant and this one is mainly focused on the terpene called menthol. That's really what gives peppermint that uh, peppermint taste, you know, that really kind of unique, almost like chewing gum, menthol, minty fresh taste. So we're gonna jump into some studies on SIBO and there's a few other pieces, you know, we can extrapolate into, uh, you know, other conditions that overlap with SIBO. I'm gonna talk about that in a second and peppermint and peppermint oil, you know, is it helpful, is it useful, do we have any data, any science supporting its use? And then I'm gonna close out with some uh, clinical experience pieces because that's really where the rubber hits the road. You can read all the science in the world and that's what I was doing when I was studying and really kind of deep in the evidence base and then you'd go and kind of apply it to a patient and it would either work or it wouldn't. And there's always a reason why, you know, maybe that particular herb wasn't suited for that individual. That's why we're talking about holistic medicine, right? It's not cookbook. Cookbook medicine doesn't really work. I mean, it might have worked for you. I doubt it because you're watching this video. So we really need to tailor it specifically to you and your individual presentation. Why did you develop SIBO? What are the root causes? What are your kind of unique needs to overcome this condition? So if we're talking about the different bugs, the bacteria that peppermint oil has been shown to be effective against, antimicrobial against, We've got things like E. coli, Staphylococcus, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Proteus, Yersinia, Enterobacter. And most of those, apart from the Staphylococcus, are gram-negative. And those are the very pro-inflammatory, kind of immunogenic bacteria that can kind of set off that gut damage and that um, inflammation and really drive symptoms. You know, they don't make you feel very good when they're imbalanced or when they're in the wrong spot. Getting into studies actually on SIBO and peppermint, there, there aren't that many, but don't worry, there's a kind of way around this. There, are, there is data we can use in the evidence base. And the really big one that I've seen here is one case study. It's not the best case study, it definitely kind of flaws in the uh, presentation and you know, it's not that kind of conclusive whether it's helpful or not. 
But the one really big piece here, they showed that enteric coated peppermint oil for this individual, this, this patient that they were um, presenting in a case study was effective at reducing the bacterial overgrowth. Even if the patient didn't see great follow-up testing and even if there were some kind of issues around the kind of methodology and how she did the uh, follow-up testing, the big, big piece here, and this gets ignored all the time in the literature, kind of drives me a bit nuts, was that the patient saw significant improvements in symptoms. Decreased bloating, that was a really big one, um, and pain improvements and also better bowel movements as well. I told you there was a little bit more data that we could kind of lean on and extrapolate from, and that was really peppermint uh, being very, very well studied, like so well studied, probably the best studied herb we have for irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. Now, why is that relevant? The relevance here is that there is a significant overlap of SIBO and IBS and some studies have said, you know, a huge, huge overlap. And some studies have said, ooh, not so huge an overlap. And, you know, I think that's because we have trouble actually diagnosing SIBO. So if we're looking at some of the data, we've got some systematic reviews with meta-analysis. And I won't bore you with the details, but basically they're just studies of studies. They're looking for bias. They're looking for, you know, conclusive data. And they're looking for kind of a pattern in the science. And uh, here we have one of my favorite studies on herbal medicine and irritable bowel syndrome. This is a gem. We're going to be covering this in a future video. Um, so stay tuned. It's led by uh, Dr. Jason Horlack. You know, the man, the myth, the legend. I, I can't thank him enough for how much he's shared, how much he's influenced my practice. He's 20 years or more ahead of, uh, you know, everyone else here. And they found that peppermint oil was very, very effective against irritable bowel or in the treatment of irritable bowel syndrome. So just so I don't get accused of cherry picking the data, we do have one meta-analysis showing that peppermint oil was not effective. And their conclusion here was that uh, peppermint oil um, has so far not been established beyond reasonable doubt. Now here's the big thing, this is where we need to be focusing in, reading, reading well, carefully. Well-designed and carefully executed studies are needed to clarify the issue. Love how they put that in there, because if you look at when it was published, it was all the way back in 1998, and all of these other systematic reviews with meta-analysis have been done since then, showing that peppermint oil is effective. So is peppermint effective against SIBO? In clinical experience, it is in my top 10 herbs for the right patient with SIBO. I use it for hydrogen dominant SIBO and I use it for methane dominant SIBO. So I find it helpful in both. And I'm always using a whole raft of different herbs when I'm treating SIBO. So on its own, I wouldn't stick with it. I have seen peppermint and oil on its own to be helpful to improve symptoms, but again, I haven't found it curative. It definitely goes a long way in helping and improving, and it plays a big role alongside other herbal medicines to get people better. I mainly stick to those herbal tinctures as I discussed. Um, I have seen a few patients improve on peppermint oil when they really need the strong one. So I'll put a link in the description below on that exact product. You can check it out, talk to your practitioner and bring it in if it's suitable for you. So there is a catch here and there's always a catch with herbal medicine. It's not a one size fits all approach. The one patient that does not go well with peppermint is the patient dealing with reflux or GERD or heartburn that finds, <laughs> and so this is where it gets a little bit complicated. It's not everyone with those uh, presentations that will not tolerate peppermint, but that finds that peppermint flares those symptoms. And that's because peppermint can not always, but it can lower that tone of the lower esophageal sphincter, so the LES. For anyone else, peppermint is extremely well tolerated. I'm sure you've tried it before. Tea might not be the most effective piece. A herbal tincture would be really helpful. And the strongest approach is the enteric coated peppermint oil. Again, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. We're going to be talking a lot about herbs and SIBO. Stay tuned.